In a world where crisis can strike at any moment, the Diplomatic Security Service, DSS, must be prepared to counter threats wherever they occur. As a law enforcement and security arm of the State Department, DSS safeguards the department's people, facilities, and information at more than 275 locations overseas. At each U.S. Embassy and Consulate, DSS Special Agents test the post's capabilities to respond to various threats, including terrorist attacks, natural disasters, political instability, and more. I'm here at Skopje, North Macedonia, as Assistant Regional Security Officer. We have a wide breadth of security programs that we run. That starts stems from local guard force, rural security guard, bodyguard program, working with fully armored vehicles, and as well as obviously working with the host nation's police and Department of Defense. Last year, a team of DSS special agents and embassy personnel at the U.S. Embassy in Skopje, North Macedonia, developed a large-scale embassy-wide training exercise that included multiple risks to the U.S. mission. DSS special agents built the exercise to test not only the embassy's response capabilities, but those of its North Macedonia partners. I'm very fortunate in that I have a team that loves training, uh, enjoys getting into the mix, and, and really wants to succeed. And the way that a, a drill of this scale will succeed is by breaking it down into its smaller components, planning it out, presenting the plan, making sure your teams understand that plan, and then executing on that small portion of the drill. And we've done each portion of this drill in part prior to, hoping to iron out any issues, pick up on any lessons learned so we can incorporate it into our final drill. So our biggest partners and the folks that we rely on the most are the Ministry of Interior, which would be the security services, the police, and all the different groups that make up the Ministry of Interior. The complex training exercise involved the regional security office Every section within the embassy, most notably, the medical team, U.S. military partners, and several North Macedonia law enforcement and first response teams. The drill itself actually was motivated and inspired by our previous ambassador, Ambassador Burns. When I had an in-brief with her on the day of the arrival, uh, one of the things that she asked me and tasked me to do is, hey, I know we are in the U.R. Um, and you know, the threat level may not be as great as some other places around the world. Um, but the chances of our mission personnel, especially our Americans, PCS and TDY into their follow-up post, which would be a high threat post, it is imperative for us to be not complacent and ensure that they know what they're getting into in the event that they go to a high threat post. I use our really good relationship with the host nation that our front office enabled us to build and maintain that bridge of relationship. And I use that to start compiling and coming out with a drill that would make sense for all of us in Skopje and that would take place anywhere else around the world. And then just going from one building block to the next, next thing you know, I was getting all the host nations' resources, MOI, different sets of their police forces, including the Minister of Defense. And the next thing you know, the DOD wanted to get involved and we had the UCOM, JSOC getting involved and their army, their infantry group wanted to get involved in our drill. But to let other mission personnel here in Skopje know that Hey, wherever you may go in the future, you may run into a situation. I would like for you to have that experience to say, hey, you know, five years ago, six years ago, when I was in scope yet, we went through this drill and I know exactly what scenarios would unfold, what my job would be, and what to anticipate. My goal when I did Operation Swan is to ensure that we hit all those talking points, uh, ensure that everybody had the equity and that they would get involved in the drill to ensure that they're more interact, they're more involved and incorporated into the drill. About seven and a half months in the planning. At first, you kind of sprinkle the idea to DOD, your POCs, and see who they know who might be interested in it. And the next thing you know, they'll be giving us six other different POCs. So in the beginning, it's just trying to get amalgamation of all these cooks who may want to play in this drill. And the next thing you know, people are like, you might want to get 
for instance, Operation Medicine Ball, because if you need to medevac, they are the ones with the airplane. You might think that even though medevac situation may not be a necessary thing, but they are the ones with charter planes, so we may end up having to use them for evacuation purposes. So for our drill, we also reached out to Operation Medicine. Uh, I had some close contacts I actually worked in real life. Uh, they were happy to roll up their sleeves and uh, do their portion of it. And in fact, this was their first ever drill that they participated in the post and was so successful and they're on their end that they won't actually emulate. So every time I do a drill like Operation Swan, uh, it's being interactive, it's being interesting. Um, and to do that, I need to get their buy-in. I think this is where the soft skills comes into play. When we did Operation Valor, which took place last year, I took the time to meet with every section throughout the weeks leading up to the actual drill to explain to them, this is what you're going to experience because this kind of drill has never taken place here. You will see a helicopter landing, you will see a military that's entered that compound, you will be evacuated, and you will be going through an actually hands-on training outdoor. And I think people were very receptive of that. This was not some run-of-the-mill, oh, another fire drill, another bomb drill, I'm gonna be on my phone regardless. They ignored their alarm, but people were actually actively participating. And I got really good feedback from it, and which is why Operation Swan was, um, that was I, had, I had no qualm, I had no hesitancy to get everyone involved once again to do this because of the feedback that I got, which was that this was great, I wanna volunteer this time, and I wanna get involved. Here's the scenario DSS built. Weeks before North Macedonia is set to hold national elections, the U.S. Embassy received credible intelligence that foreign terrorist fighters plan to interrupt the process. DSS learns the terrorist fighters have already deployed a sophisticated disinformation campaign leveraging multiple social media platforms. Additional sources indicate that the foreign terrorist fighters plan to travel to North Macedonia to continue their efforts to disrupt the democratic process. In addition to promoting stability within the Balkans and countering terrorism, supporting fair and free elections within North Macedonia is a strategic priority for the U.S. mission and the U.S. Department of State as a whole. I am the RSO here in Skopje. The RSO is the regional security officer. Uh, I'm in charge of the regional security office, uh, and my role is uh, the safety and security of the mission, as well as all of our staff, which make up the U.S. Embassy in North Macedonia. The primary role that I have here is lead advisor, lead security advisor to the ambassador and the deputy chief of mission on all security related matters that relate to uh, preparedness, emergency management, and mission well-being. Imagining what we could deal with is one of those uh, initial steps in preparation that will enable us to respond in the most uh, efficient and expeditious way uh, in the future if we were to deal with an actual emergency. Having the actual units that would respond, whether that be the medical teams, the emergency response team, the host nation police teams, to come and act out their roles in as realistic a way as possible presents an amazing amount of experience to our team, as well as our host nation partners. Days before the action took place, the regional security office began setting the stage for the response drill. I told the foreign, uh, our local staff to build a storyline, which they did, it was amazing. It was 30 page long uh, storyline with you know seven individuals uh, made up, with different backgrounds, and I was like, this is fantastic, you know? What can we do to disseminate this 30-page document to the rest of the country team? Because we know no one's gonna read a 30-page document. And the next thing I knew was, you know what, why don't we use a Twitter account? So we created this fake Twitter account using a Microsoft board, obviously we didn't use the actual Twitter account. Our surveillance detection coordinator spent enormous amount of hours creating what looked like an actual Twitter using a PowerPoint and started using all this mocked up individuals who are notional terrorist fighters and put them as having a conversation about doing a preeminent attack against US Embassy and our partners. That kind of snowballed into the idea of doing a disinformation drill. We ran it by pass, uh, acting pass during that time and she was definitely on board with it. We kind of spiced it up a little bit. We got the front officer's involvement and next thing you know, 
the whole country team was involved in. All right, one day PASS was sending out this information about subject A and subject B. We're having this, this, this discussion over Twitter. The embassy got a cut of wind of it. Here is a snapshot of it. How would the rest of you who are sitting in this country team would respond to it? We built that scenario for seven days leading up to the actual drill. The day of the drill, when we met together, had held an EAC. Nobody was blindsided about what was taking place and who the, the bad actors were. In the drill, the online campaign was effective, sowing the seed of doubt and disillusionment among portions of the North Macedonia population. The disinformation campaign included false information that Americans were helping manipulate the elections. The storyline was that these unknown terrorists was going to dismantle and disrupt the elections uh, process. And as we rapidly approach election next year, we wanted to actually let the host nation know that you have, the U.S. Embassy has full support to ensure that you guys go through a democratic election process. We're here to support that. And at the same time, we expect you guys to respond accordingly, should there be an event. The next most relevant drill that will take place will be election-based. The incident commander primary function is managing the emergency, the exercise at the time. But another very vital aspect to the incident commander role is preparation prior to any a critical incident that would ever happen. What that involves is training, both for my security staff, as well as our host nation partners. And then onto that all mission staff here, we make sure that they're all well aware of the security protocols and procedures to hopefully meet any challenges that might come to us here in Skopje. The EAC, uh, uh, the Emergency Action Committee, is comprised of section and agency heads at an embassy overseas. You'll have the consular section chief, the political and economic section chief, and whatever agencies happen to be at post are on the EAC. They play a real critical role in our response and preparedness to, to crises. As DCM, I lead the EAC, and my role there is to really help facilitate discussion and to sort of keep, keep things flowing. But I'll really rely on the EAC to provide information, but also to make recommendations. So ultimately, the EAC may make a recommendation to the ambassador, to the chief of mission, to say, this is what's going on, and we recommend we as a mission do the following or you as chief of mission make this decision. Usually in a crisis what we look at are things called decision points. So we look at like kind of thresholds that we cross. Let's say the airport shuts down or the government is not able to respond with emergency responders or communications are cut. When we reach certain decision points then we as an EAC have to kind of get together and say, are we at a point where we need to make a decision to you know, evacuate family members or evacuate personnel? Or in a worst case scenario, we saw this in Africa recently where sometimes embassies are shut down. We do like a drawdown. So the EAC plays a real critical role in helping discuss things giving advice and, and recommending decisions. Another key element of this drill was the medical response team. Operational medicine is a directorate within the Bureau of Medical Services at the State Department. And our mission is to do all the medical contingency planning for the Bureau as well as the department as a whole. The directorate basically formed out of an acknowledgement that we ask our diplomatic community to operate in environments that are either very high threat or medically austere. And we owe it to our community to make sure that we are understanding the risks that we're asking them to take by being in these types of places and that we're doing everything that we can to mitigate those risks as much as possible, especially from the medical perspective. So our directorate does everything from planning, resourcing, and um, even response uh, for these medical contingency plans. Um, so we have a 
group of individuals that focuses on the preparedness side of things, both one in terms of working with our health units overseas and our health providers, our medical providers, to ensure that their medical preparedness plans are um, as robust as they possibly can be, to make sure that they are prepared in the event that something catastrophic happens at their post. We have a group of individuals that are responsible for ensuring that they have all the specialized medication and equipment that they will need. And then we also have a group of folks that uh, form the response element within our directorate who will deploy to embassies or other crisis situations as part of that forward response. And these are that's usually done in conjunction with our diplomatic security colleagues. After months of planning, the U.S. Embassy in Skopje was ready to begin the drill. It was a simulated election day. The embassy dispatched two teams simultaneously to monitor the elections. One team traveled by air using a host nation helicopter, the other by ground. The foreign terrorist fighters were ready for the movements. They attacked both teams, detonating bombs that injured several individuals. The mass casualty event propelled embassy leadership to respond quickly. The Bureau of Medicine dispatched its medevac air ambulance, which was staged at Suda Bay, Greece, which landed at Skopje International Airport with a medical team to medevac the injured personnel. As the Embassy Emergency Action Committee focused on responding to the attacks, a violent mob provoked by the disinformation campaign began marching towards the embassy, and reports trickled in that IEDs had been planted near the embassy. With injured personnel in remote locations, potential bombs, and an angry crowd marching on the embassy, the RSO advised the ambassador and other senior leaders that they must evacuate. The RSO worked with local law enforcement partners to contain the crowd while the North Macedonia counterterrorism team searched for potential bombs. As embassy personnel evacuated to predetermined safety location, embassy personnel guided by the medical response team had a chance to use their tactical medical training to assist those who had been injured in the attacks. With the injured receiving treatment and the embassy personnel safely evacuated, the RSO team focused on finding the terrorists who had caused the mayhem. Working alongside a U.S. Army element and a host nation counterterrorism team, DSS special agents tracked the terrorists to a mock village. They executed a nighttime raid, rounding up all the actors posing as terrorists. With the terrorists captured, Operation Swan was completed. I just want to thank everybody, especially to our Macedonian partners, for a really terrific exercise today. Thank you all for being here and supporting us uh, at the mission. Thanks to everybody in the mission who's worked so hard on the security team, um, in DOD, and really every other section for the great work that you do every day and reinforcing what are absolutely critically important skills and experiences to have in advance. So thank you all. All right, everybody, let's go! These exercises are invaluable. They allow U.S. Embassy staff to practice life-saving skills such as tactical medicine and effective evacuation procedures, and the RSO team to test their response capabilities. Additionally, it allows the entire U.S. diplomatic mission to enhance their coordination and collaboration with host nation counterparts and U.S. partners, which is crucial during an actual emergency. Just as here in Skopje, DSS is committed to protecting U.S. diplomats, facilities, and information around the globe. <laughs> <laughs>